and into the Spider-Man universe and Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, so I give the Amazing Spider-Man a 5 out of 10. Spider-Verse is the best one. Second best is Amazing Spider-Man. And the worst one is Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, even though I love all of them, I l love all of them as, uh, you know, fun. Fun to watch. But not really great. Uh, I mean, you can kid yourself. Hey, these are great, great, deep, complex stories. But they're really not. We can look at them and take a close look at them. They're not really deep or complex like they should be. Therefore, when the, uh... Therefore, the characters don't actually have us. The, moment, the sad moments are not as sad as they could be, and the happy moments are not as happy as they could be, or the funny moments are not as happy as they could be. And it was like how, uh, uh, how Andrew Gotham plays him in a sequel that plays Peter Parker half a little differently. He plays the Peter Parker half in a Spider-Man half, both for comedic release. Now, in a sequel, I mean, the first one, the first main Spider-Man, he played the Peter Parker half, Peter Parker half mostly for comedic relief and the Peter Parker part straight and for drama. Now that's how I was in the console, therefore I didn't have problems with that. But the thing is, not that it's not drama as Spider Man's personality, but you see because he cracks so many jokes, well, he cracks so many jokes and, uh, and, you know, his jokes are childish and, and, and uh, and funny at the same time, so with that, uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, I think uh, another problem I have with Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, he's not in enough danger. And in and they, and they his first and his two films as Spider-Man. He's never, not really in any danger, like, even he, like, Spider-Man was in danger even in the first two Spider-Man films, which was garbage, but at least he had Spider-Man in danger. See, I feel like we have, don't have Spider-Man in that much danger, and... Not really cracking that joke. It makes it less hard to, it makes it takes away some certain level level of his character because I feel like um okay I'm gonna say this I feel like uh I feel like both Spider Man's. Maguire and uh, Andrew Garfield are too fucking OP as an overpowerful because part of being Spider Man is that you need to get your ass handed to you and handed into you every time in order to learn and to develop. That's how he grew as Spider Man. That's how he was able to outmatch his out, out with his enemies, not with his not just with his might, but with his brain power because he always would all sink them because he would he would have many many. Many, many ridiculous amount of times of him getting his ass whooped. Mm. While still cracking jokes, he would still get his ass whooped while cracking jokes. He was also do that when he would uh, would win. He would do that when he when when, his, when he was losing. I I feel like um this is another reason why I think. Tom Holmes is the best live adaptation of Spider-Man because he's not too OP. And, uh, he gets his ass hand enough, but not to a point when he feels incompetent. He feels like he's getting his ass hand too because for future, and, uh, like, uh, because he gets his ass handed to him to, to learn. And I feel like that's what makes him the, uh, best, that's another reason why I think he's the best Spider-Man. Besides him being the right age and built for a 15 year old and 16 year old, he's 16 in the sequel of Spider Man Far From Home, but most people think he's still 15 when he says that he's 16. And the movie, it says he's 16, so it's like they didn't watch the movie or they just weren't paying attention, I don't know. Anyway, that's my thoughts on why all these Spider Man films are not my favorite or. These Spider-Man films are not the best Spider-Man films, or not my Spider-Man films. Well, you know, as in, they're not bad, it's not good.